The most important thing to note for the properties of water is the basic structure and the fact that there is hydrogen bonding. So there is hydrogen bound to NOF, so it's an O. And you can see that hydrogen is bound to a non-bonding lone pair of electrons from another molecule, which happens to be water. So because it's also a very small molecule, there's a high density, a high number of hydrogen bonds. So even though alcohol is a slightly larger molecule, there is less uh, a number of hydrogen bonds per volume. So uh, water, which is in uh, water, has 100 degrees um, Celsius as a boiling point, whereas ethanol is only around 80. I think it's 78 uh, because there are more hydrogen bonds for the water. Okay. Uh, the another th another thing is that it, it's very small. So if you're looking at like dissolves like anything that is small will dissolve or something that has polar bonds in it. So even things like oxygen uh, and nitrogen, because they're small, they will also dissolve in the water, even though they're not polar. And some larger molecules, uh, like some large proteins, uh, even though they're large, they can still dissolve in water if they've got polar areas. Okay, so those two things, both uh, being pol polar and small, are important. And of course, a large number of hydrogen bonds. A curious thing, if you see a snowflake that doesn't have six um, spikes on it, then it's incorrectly drawn because what happens, which is unique to water, is it's one of the few substances that are actually less dense when they're cold. So when it becomes a solid, it actually becomes less dense because the kinetic energy, these things are rolling over each other. But when the kinetic energy is small enough, those hydrogen, hydrogen bonds can actually hold themselves in place and they figure themselves out themselves out in a six um, configuration. They line up just like this. Uh, and so there are these huge gaps in there and so that makes um, more space. Whereas normally if there was higher kinetic energy, there would that would break these molecules would vibrate enough to break those hydrogen bonds and roll over each other. And so water is more dense than the solid. Liquid is more dense than the solid, which is highly unusual. So of course, that means the solid state, which uh, we call ice, will float on water. I'm not sure if this one, uh, this one's sort of lending itself to a bit too much into biology. Uh, so this one's surface tension. So the reason that the, you'll see droplets of water or you things can sit on the surface of water is because the hydrogen bonding, they bind to each other like they're all hugging each other into a tight ball. Uh, and so that um, creates this um, tightness between them and you can actually put pressure on the outside and walk on water or you can see that there is a, a round bubble forming on top rather than just spreading out on a surface. Lastly, water is a solvent because it has both the positive and negative ends. It can actually dissolve many substances. So it can grab solid salts and pull them apart and make them uh, move around. So it's called the universal solvent. It's the best solvent we know of. And so this will allow substances that were either just sitting there by themselves allowed to go into solution and so mix with other chemicals and therefore they have the chance to react. And so the ability of water to, to react uh, to, and to move cations and anions and dissolve them um, is another reason why water is con uh, considered by many as if there's no water on a planet then there'll be no life because uh, all of these things that we've talked about are essential for most life systems that we know of.